Okay, so I want to introduce you to the functionality of the Swingshot camera. I'm first going to turn the camera on with a quick button press. And you can see the camera boot up here. It's got a question mark showing that it doesn't have a swing drive in there. So if you see that, you know you're missing a swing drive. Let me then introduce you to the options on the bottom of the camera. Uh, when I talk about a swing drive, that is actually this uh, micro SD recording card, which is single use, so you can use it one time inside of a swing shot camera, and that actually gets placed inside of this thin port. You might need to use your fingernail to tuck it in there, but you'll hear it actually click. Now, on the bottom of the camera, there are a number of buttons. This is the time button which is used to adjust the recording time when you're in course mode. This is the mode button which is used to change the various recording modes. This resolution button is not currently being used in this version of the camera. Underneath this door is a battery that will provide about one hour of solid recording time and four hours of standby time which is plenty for the swing drive capability. There's a small screw here. If you ever need to remove the battery, make sure that you keep that screw handy. And then this mini USB port that you see there below the swing drive port, that's actually a charging port. And just know that it's not used for transferring data on and off the camera. It'll take about three hours to be able to charge the camera fully. And you'll know that it's fully charged because this LED will go to a solid glowing red it will not pulse, which it does while it's charging. Just so you know, this is a microphone. And it'll record everything while you're playing out on the course. And this is, of course, the lens. So let me show you what the camera looks like now that we have the swing drive in. The first thing you're going to want to do is adjust the mode and go to test mode. which is this orange icon that says test on it. Once in test mode, you press the button once and you'll see it records for about 10 seconds. When it's finished recording, it's actually going to play back for you. This is the only place on the camera that we have playback. You're not able to view your recordings while you're out on the golf course. So once we get finished with test mode, it'll display an OK message. Press the green button once. And then you have to press the mode button again to get back out of test mode. The first mode you'll see here is range mode, which is recording at 720p, 60 frames per second. And what's unique about this is that it has a countdown timer that will record continuously until you stop it. So you can be out on the range and hitting a bucket of balls and taking a lesson, recording that lesson, and it'll just keep recording until you press this button again. Once you stop it, it you will uh, be able to come back at any point and start it back up again. It'll continue to record continuously. Uh, you'll actually know that it's recording because you'll see the LED light on the front of the camera is lit. And then the countdown timer is continuing to go down. One important thing, do not turn the camera off, which we'll talk about how to do that later, or remove the swing drive because you will not be able to put it back in and you'll need a new swing drive in order to operate the camera. So I'm gonna stop recording here and switch modes again. Now we're going to go over to from range mode to course mode. This is again 720p, 60 frames per second. So if you really want to look at your swing very closely, the different thing about course mode is it's going to have a countdown timer from 10 seconds down to zero. This gives you time to get ready for your shot. When that's happening, the LED light is blinking. And as soon as it starts recording, it switches to a solid red light and we'll continue to count down for the amount of time that you have set on the camera. In this case, it defaults right now to 75 seconds, 
but if I were to stop this, I could go to the time button on the bottom, and you'd want to do this actually in the Pro Shop, ideally, and you could change it to 45 seconds, and that'll go away, and now you'll see the timer will count down and record from 45 seconds instead of from 75 seconds. So 43, 42, and so on. I'll stop recording now, and then the th third and final mode is course mode 1080p 30 frames per second, and this will enable you, again, by the way, it defaults back to 75 seconds, so if you want to get it to 45 seconds, you have to hit the time uh, mode. Now, once you do this once, if you don't change modes, it'll stay at 45 seconds. But it's going to count down, and what this will do is give you a more um, panor panoramic shot, or, or more, let's say, a resolution to your image, but it does have a lower frame rate. So it's uh, for capturing beautiful vistas and memorable golf courses, but not necessarily for analyzing your swing in great detail. So that's it. Um, now I'll stop recording. When I'm finished and I want to actually power down the camera, this is only when I am done recording for the day uh, and I'm going to return the camera to the Pro Shop. I hold down this green button for six seconds. One, two, three, four, and it powers off. Uh, it's approximately six seconds and that's it. Now you can actually remove the swing drive which is spring-loaded, so you just pop it out. Should be easy enough to do. And then when you're ready to put it into your computer, you'll use this adapter, which is a, a micro SD to SD adapter, and you can just stick that into the side of your computer. Now, if your computer doesn't have an SD adapter, which most do because this is the standard for digital photography, you can also get one of these USB adapters, which every computer has a USB drive. So you'll see this will just stick into the side of the computer and you'll be able to read the images right off of the drive. That's it. Thank you very much.